Okay, so then, welcome ladies and gentlemen here to our AC Styria Clusters workshop uh, on NAFTA, the mobility market, today and tomorrow here at the ICS Export Tag 2016. Thank you uh, at the ICS team for having us here. And uh, also I would like to welcome all uh, people that are following us here on our live stream in the cameras. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to have you here all also, even though you're not sitting with us here in this room. I would like to welcome on the stage uh, Mr. Burton Lee. Um, he is lecturer on, as Franz already said, a European entrepreneurship and innovation at the Stanford University. He's here in Styria for two weeks. He will be giving us uh, some information about how he sees European and Styrian entrepreneurship, our innovation culture in uh, comparison to the Silicon Valley and, and US innovation culture. So that's already your presentation. Everything works I with the I hope tech so. guys. <laughs> so the stage is yours. Thank you. Burton, thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, so I'm at the end of uh, two and a half weeks here in Katz and Steiermark doing an assessment of the innovation ecosystem uh, around Theo Graz, but more broadly in the region. And I'm going to be giving some of my impressions, but also some of the, tell you some about some of the things we think about in the Valley today, which might be interesting for you and which are not around uh, only technology. Um, this is our state flag. We are the uh, Republic of California. There's also the Republic of Texas. Uh, sometimes we think of ourselves as being a little bit separate from the rest of the United States and even from Los Angeles. Uh, but I'm gonna to talk today, focus on Silicon Valley and innovation, uh, our innovation ecosystem. So this is a picture of the Bay Area. San Francisco is way up here, San Jose. Stanford is around in this area. Um, this is really the heart of Silicon Valley in the southern part of, of the Bay Area. And you can see a number of European companies, uh, Mercedes, Siemens, going back many years. So it's a very active uh, center of innovation for European large size companies as, as well. Um, and of course, we're gonna talk a little bit about lessons for Starmark. So I'm gonna focus on these three areas, technology, organizations, and work culture. Um, the focus of my report is primarily around Teu Gotts, but I've also done uh, a bit of an assessment of the broader ecosystem here in Steiermark around uh, other UNIs, Fachhochschulen, clusters, park, industry, um, along with uh, some of the broader economic uh, organizations in the area. Um, these are a number of the companies that I visited along with universities and I've spoken, coached, mentored quite a few startups here during the past two weeks. Um, so what I've heard a lot about is uh, in terms of current discussion and themes is a lot of talk about digitalization. Uh, and not only here, but you find this across Germany. Uh, I just came from doing an assessment in the Ruhrgebiet back in April where digitalization industry 4.0 is getting a lot of attention. It's the hot topic in German and the German Mittelstand and also in the Großfirmen. Um, so what is, what is the view from Silicon Valley around what is the high ground of technology? Well, we, um, we have a long history of technology going back into pre-World War II. Hewlett Packard was established here in 1939 at the birth of the test equipment industry out of Stanford University. And you see in the first several generations, it's exclusively life science, uh, hardware, then beginning with Apple, uh, moving into personal computers and increasing software. And right now we have very, two very strong um, branches between software and hardware. So, okay, Mike guy's saying the mic is not working. Okay, please come forward. Let's test the mic. This is important for the live streaming. Get us. Um, so, uh, you know, of course, at this point, we are way up here, but there are two very strong branches, software, hardware, and today software is highly dominant in Silicon Valley. Uh, in consumer and enterprise. Um, so there, I think there are some 
two perhaps fundamental different visions about the future of technology and what is the high ground. Uh, I would say Germany versus Silicon Valley, Europe versus Silicon Valley, where um, the view from Germany and Europe really is about manufacturing, Industry 4.0, uh, which is viewed as the strategic high ground. In Silicon Valley, we think it might be something else, and that something else would be artificial intelligence, especially around autonomous uh, navigation, autonomous reasoning systems, uh, around automated reasoning, knowledge representation, machine learning, computer vision robotics, natural language processing, uh, together with other software, um, parts of the software industry. Um, we, th we look at artificial intelligence as the future brains industry, brains of vehicles, brains of your smartphone, uh, brains to help us in tasks, in our personal lives, in our work lives. And so you see some very large projects being developed around IBM, IBM Watson, for example, which is all about very high-end artificial intelligence playing games. But more and more of this is being brought into commercial services as well. Those of you who have a smartphone, Siri, that's high-end artificial intelligence and AI automated reasoning. Um, and then, of course, you have transportation systems, e-commerce systems, medical diagnostics, military and security systems. The focus here in Europe tends to be more on factory systems in terms of AI, though you do see uh, AI companies coming out in robotics uh, and in natural language processing, which are usually bought up by the Americans quite quickly. Um, but AI is, is a core fundamental competency in Silicon Valley at Stanford. Berkeley, uh, and also in the Boston area at MIT, and then Carnegie Mellon in uh, Pittsburgh. Um, so there's also a lot of discussion around Internet of Things. We are also engaged around this in Silicon Valley, but from a different perspective, uh, it's not about the things. We look at this more as about the data that things generate. So again, even though it's hardware, we look at this from a software and data perspective, which is a very different way of looking at these industries and where the real business opportunities and profit and margin opportunities are. So that's kind of a big picture of, at a strategic high level of how we see the technology landscape. Uh, let's talk about organizations and Arbeitskultur, or organizational culture, because this is another very important aspect of Silicon Valley, which is often missed uh, when people try and understand how the Valley works. So there's a lot of discussion now in the Valley about how companies can transition from old traditional uh, organizations, essentially hierarchies, to what is now being called teams of teams. This is the current thinking about company organization and culture. And this team of teams concept is largely being seen in the very high-end software companies, but it's also shaping how hardware companies, manufacturing companies are organizing themselves and thinking about the future of work. Um, a team of team in a corporation, instead of looking at like this hierarchical system, might include team of your external partners, team of your marketing team, team of your sales team, your customer team, operations development. Uh, instead of a strict hierarchy, more a loose network, which allows you to change teams, uh, position them in special projects. It allows for a more nimble, quicker, more agile response to fast-moving industry conditions. So a lot of this is being driven by the accelerating pace of innovation being coming out of digital software technologies, which is now affecting, uh, beginning to affect the manufacturing and hardware sector as well. And so the question is, how do you go from a traditional command and control model of organization of the corporation to something like a command of teams to a team of teams? And this is this is the subject of a recent book, which I encourage you all to look at, called Team of Teams. It's written by the former US commanding general in Afghanistan, General Stanley McChrystal. We read this in the Stanford Engineering School uh, in the design group. It's being read by the leading CEOs and thought leaders in the Valley and across the United States about the future of uh, company organization, because we view company organization, company culture, as far more important than strategy and is really the key to future competitiveness. Um, so company culture is something we think about a lot in, in Silicon Valley. And we don't view this just as being friendly, relaxed, paintings on the walls. That's important. It's necessary, but not sufficient. Company culture really was 
uh, and the thinking around company culture was developed first at Hewlett Packard in the late 1950s and 60s as an attempt to uh, distinguish Hewlett Packard from IBM, which was the leading East Coast technology company. Uh, culture is a way to keep people, to make companies a fun place to work, uh, especially engineers. Uh, and as we've moved increasingly into software, company culture has changed, uh, adapted to different environments. Uh, heavy focus on product design here. Google uh, really took company culture and organization to the next level uh, with very large scale software systems and search and internet, for example. Um, so these are some of the, th the three companies that have influenced most of thinking about company culture in the Valley as an element of a key element and cornerstone of company uh, competitive strategy. Just to give you a sense uh, of how different companies have approached culture historically and organization, this, and these are, I'm going to show you some drawings from a French uh, software engineer who works at Google who's uh, done this in a bit of a humorous manner. So do not consider these absolutely fully correct, uh, precise organization charts. They're intended to give you a feel for the personality of the company. This was Microsoft under Steve Ballmer. OK. Um, what happened when it moved to Nokia Sedella? A friendlier internal company. So Microsoft was known for being extremely competitive, extremely cutthroat within the organization. It was a cornerstone of the culture which Ballmer uh, uh, developed in order to uh, keep Microsoft as a leader in Windows and operating systems and many other markets. And since the new CEO came in, in 2015, he has tried to reshape the culture inside Microsoft to make it a little bit softer, um, a nicer place to work, um, a bit more humane in many ways, but also to continue to be a world leader in software and information technology. Uh, Google. So Google is a large corporation. Um, this might look like many other organograms. What's different is you see here three nodes at the top. So this being Eric Schmidt uh, and Larry and Sergey. So the top top three guys. Uh, you then see a row of nodes right under that. So these would be senior vice presidents. What is interesting about this is what is missing. What is missing is the entire middle layer of management. Okay, And Google was specifically de designed, they specifically set out to design Google to move fast, to be able to move in, enter into new markets, um, to think more agilely, to uh, essentially be more innovative than traditional uh, other companies in Silicon Valley by putting a lot of the power at the team level, at the project and product manager level. And so this has allowed, this structure has allowed, together with aspects of Google culture, has allowed Google over and over again to move from search into many other markets. Google Maps, boom, 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 boom. They have experimented and expanded. And now, of course, we heard uh, automobiles uh, are an interesting area. How does a traditional software company go into the automotive sector? What's the culture? How do you organize yourself to be able to do that over and over and over again? Or into smart homes. Um, then there's Apple. So this was Apple, again, loosely uh, described under Steve Jobs, who was the dominant figure. Uh, he was really at the whole center of the Apple culture. And then after he passed away, Tim Cook came in. It really became a little looser. Um, so personalities can have a big influence on culture. Uh, again, this is intended to give you an approximate sense of the difference between companies. But I think what's interesting is that I don't see these discussions in Europe, in Austria, about company culture uh, at this level of distinction. And I don't hear business schools or CEOs thinking about how to shape and create company culture as an element of competitive advantage for the medium and long term. And this is really key to understanding the Valley is it's not about technology. It's about culture, about company culture, university culture, startup culture, corporate culture. Um, Culture as a strategic advantage, Arbeitskultur, okay, versus competitors. You need strong culture to attract new employees, attract new engineers. You need strong culture, attractive culture to keep them. Uh, if you don't have that, it's very hard to recruit people in Silicon Valley to join your company. So really, in many ways, when you're starting a company, the first one of the first things you have to think about is what kind of culture are we going to create? Who are we going to hire? 
are their personalities going to be a good fit to the kind of place that other people will want to join. So company culture for us is the core innovation platform, not technology. And culture beats strategy in this context. Doesn't matter how good the strategy is if your organization can't, can't implement it. Um, so let's talk about Steiermark specifically, and I'm going to focus on software and data, mostly on software. Um, so having spent two weeks here, I see elements of a very interesting emerging software cluster in Graz and Steiermark, which I don't think really is appreciated or seen by many people here. And I've detected this through talks with students, with entrepreneurs, uh, with small uh, and medium-sized companies, um, in the ecosystem today, um, interviews, visits to large companies, but also seeing what's happening inside TU Graz and the history of new companies formed out of TU Graz. Um, just to give you some examples of where, in what sectors this emerging software cluster is active, educational technologies, gaming, enterprise software, healthcare IT, for example, both established firms, startups, student activities, along with freelance software developers. So one of the really outstanding examples of a very interesting software company which is actually embedded inside TU Graz is the campus online application system which is being used by many technical universities across Europe. It's, it's part of the um, service offering of the Zentrale Informatikdienst, ZID, inside the university. So this is actually run by the University Verwaltung but it's a significant uh, enterprise that earns revenues each year with many customers uh, among the top technical universities of Europe. But it's embedded inside the university. I'm suggesting that this should be spun out of the university into a company, raise venture capital, and potentially go across Europe and go, go global. So this is a crown jewel here in Steiermark, in Graz, which very few other people have even heard about. Um, this is world class. This is really world class. And then uh, there's also been some work at TU Graz around MOOCs, so massively online open courses, uh, where they've developed an early version of a platform which is receiving quite a bit of interest from other Austrian universities and the Austrian government. Could potentially also be developed into an interesting private company spun out of the TU Graz. Example of a smaller startup uh, working on apps for children and teenagers, also connected to TU Graz. Then there's the gaming industry, which is quite young, less than two years old, actually, uh, software gaming. And it's really been surprising. I just came across this accidentally in discussions with people. It's surprising the, the number of recent events, major conferences, game development conferences here in Graz. Um, this, was, this conference uh, button was held in April in the Seifenfabrik Graz. 1,500 participants. This is exciting stuff. I mean, a conference attracting 1,500 people to Graz is a big deal. And it's mostly, it's young programmers, coders, game designers, artists, creative people. So this is significant. This is how you form new industries today around digital technology, is getting people together, doing fun stuff together. Um, and then more examples of other gaming activities, so connected with TU Graz, uh, so hackathons, the game jam at TU Graz from last year, uh, attracting 30 to 50 students, for example, uh, two days of basically creating games, hacking games. Students come together and just code around some gaming concept. Uh, an example of some of the gaming companies currently here in the region, so Bongfish, let's see, Rarebyte, Spraylight, Again, very few people are aware or think of Graz as a software gaming, gaming area, but maybe this could be developed into a real cluster as part of a larger software cluster. And then there are the more established companies, which I think many of you are familiar with, Infonova uh, and Unicom, what, which we would call more in the enterprise software space. So I think there are some very interesting emerg you know, elements of an emerging software cluster which deserve more attention from industry leaders, but also from political leaders here. I would like to see Steiermark uh, recognized as an emerging software cluster. And I think we should start calling this a software cluster instead of putting it under IT. We need to start 
so putting the hardware over here, the RFID, the Infineon, all the hardware, Electrotechnik over here, and start focusing on software and building the software community and capabilities because there's a lot of activity here which simply is not really being recognized or supported strong, strongly enough. Um, I think Starmark needs to develop its own software digital innovation entrepreneurship roadmap uh, with a set of activities, both from the private sector, universities, and government. Uh, I would like to see more focus on software programming, development skills, uh, all the way down to the Grundschule level, gymnasium, up into the unis, the FHAs, and the other uh, third level uh, education institutions. Teaching coding, programming, not theory, not informatic, programming. Um, build, building the software community, here among students, software developers, coders, gamers, also data scientists. It's software plus data. Uh, so we can get significantly more numbers. So today, out of Teo uh courses that produce real coders, whether mobile app or gamers, is producing somewhere in the area of maybe 130 students a year. We need to do better. And it's possible to do better because there's much, there's actually a lot of demand at TU Graz by students for more courses. So this is an area where I'm very optimistic that we can get more programmers, double the number of programmers on the street who are coding games, building apps, but also going into uh, the auto cluster, into established companies, for example, because there's a big need, a big gap between uh, the need, demand for programmers in the established companies and the supply here in the region. Um, we need these courses aimed not just inside Informatik, but also outside Informatik, at the Ingenieur, at the Designers, at the Mediziner, at the Geisteswissenschaftler, the Sozialwissenschaftler. We need to begin offering programming uh, to everyone inside the universities and Fachhochschulen. Uh, additional courses, brand new courses around these topics primarily, but also including uh, training, education around software entrepreneurship, design thinking, data science, business models, and end user engagement. How do you actually engage with customers, growth hacking, rapid growth of online businesses? Um, hackathons. There are some very good hackathons going on here right now, but we need to be doing a lot more targeted at the automotive cluster, for example, uh, green tech cluster, other clusters, manufacturing cluster, where they see a need for accelerating the speed of software and IT-related innovation. So um, this is where I see a need to, in addition to diversifying the focus uh, around digital technologies and businesses, we also need to be thinking about how do we do culture change. We need to be bringing more digital software culture into Steiermark because the thinking here is very heavily dominated by decades of traditional manufacturing hardware culture. Machine and bau kultur. And the, way, the best way to do that is to get lots more software people, young people, coders, thinking about new ideas, who think fast, who can prototype, who simply don't have the patience to be working in the older structures of the more established companies, which tend to be more hierarchical. Um, so Industry 4.0, I think it's a good program in principle, but it's, and it's necessary, I think, make, to take manufacturing to the next step in Germany or here. It's necessary, but it's not enough. It's not enough for Steiermark and for Austria. So Industry 4.0, it really does not address this issue of culture change inside companies. It's purely a technology program. And so the, the core issue, in my opinion, is not technology. It's about Arbeitskulturwandel innerhalb der Industrie, OK? Which means new thinking on the part of the Aufsichtsräte, uh, by the Geschäftsführer, by the chief information officers, if they even have chief information officers. Uh, it's about a transfer, a shift, transformation, a, a buildup from Maschinenbaukultur to Digital Arbeitskultur, from Wissenschaftskultur to more innovation culture. Uh, Industry 4.0 is not a software strategy. It's a part of a software strategy, but it's not a software strategy for Steiermark. Steiermark needs a software strategy, and it doesn't have one today. It has pieces of one. So um, part of a software strategy involves extensive teaching of digital entrepreneurship, uh, 
in students all the way down to the Grundschule level, but also inside companies, the strategic use of IT and software for competitive advantage in the KMUs, the Mittelstand, Großfirmen. Um, but I think, and this is an idea that we've kicked around in the past few days with a few groups, I think that Steiermark should form a Steiermark Software Council. So not part of the Innovation Council, a Software Council, just around software, and not just the leaders, but the people who actually build right software. So the entrepreneurs, the founders, the investors in software startups, the gamers, but also include the Grosskonzerne, the clusters, the family companies, the universities, not just the rectors and the vice rectors and directors of institutes and deans, the students. The students are driving this, okay, far more than the professors and the universities. And also bring in the creative industry cluster to really think about what can we do in Steiermark, how can we uh, accelerate the development of a very interesting and unique software industry. I think Steiermark can become a software uh, driving sector and maybe a leader in software not embedded software, but consumer enterprise gaming um, in the region, but across Europe with sustained energy direction and focus. So thank you very much.